event continues this afternoon at Mount Lassman Square. We'll have details just ahead. Ripley's Aquarium is the latest attraction to reopen to the public, welcoming visitors back starting today. We'll have more on this coming up. And Mississauga has stepped in to host about 200 people forced to evacuate their homes in northern Ontario because of out-of-control wildfires. 4 o'clock from 299 Queen Street West. This is Toronto's Breaking News, CP24. Hello, I'm Christina Tanelia. Ontario is reporting 170 new cases of COVID-19 and three more deaths. More than 19,000 tests were processed for a positivity rate of 0.8%. There are 44 new cases in Toronto, 26 in Peel, 17 in Hamilton, 15 in Waterloo, and 13 in Grey Bruce. And once again this weekend, a major COVID-19 vaccination drive is underway, this time in North York. The Vax the North Clinic is open to walk-ins at Mel Lastman Square. First and second doses are being administered to anyone 12 and older. People who turn out to get their shots can also enjoy free food, prizes, and entertainment. The clinic is part of an initiative to increase vaccine uptake in parts of the city with low vaccination rates. One of the reasons we're here in North York today is because in the, in the heart of North York, there are postal codes and even individual buildings and communities where the vaccination rate runs 20% less than what I said was the case in the rest of the city. So if you're at 80%, say, that have had first dose, you're at 60% in areas not far from here. And in, we've discovered just from all the research we can do, in many cases it's, it's, a, it's, it's a barrier that's very practical, like a language barrier or the hours of the clinic uh, or the geographic locations of the clinic. And so that's why we'll have a place in the heart of North York, close to those postal codes, open for long hours. Relied upon some industry partners who are offering prizes. And so the first thousand first doses will get a free TFC jersey, thanks to MLSE. Uh, we've got concert tickets to the opening weekend of Bud Stage from Live Nation. Lululemon has given out uh, $550 uh, gift cards. So just some fun things, kind of get people going. The Vax the North Clinic is open until 10.30 tonight and will operate again tomorrow from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. This too, Shoppers Drug Mart is holding a marathon vaccination blitz today. Select 24-hour locations in the province are hosting a Vaxathon for residents age 18 or older today. The company says it's ideal for people who are struggling to book an appointment during normal business hours. First and second Moderna shots are being offered on a first-come, first-served basis. Walk-ins will continue until 9 a.m. tomorrow. And there are some changes being implemented at all city-run vaccine clinics. Both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are being administered at those sites, depending on supply. And as of Monday, there will be no need to book appointments for first doses. The nine city-run clinics are also offering walk-in vaccinations for anyone 12 and older needing a first or second dose. Youth can walk in every day from noon to 7 p.m. And those who still haven't gotten their COVID-19 vaccine in Peel region are now being given a chance to choose which one they want because of an increase in supply. Peel Public Health Clinics will now be offering both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines across all sites. This means residents can select their vaccine brand when they arrive for their appointment. Pfizer is always available for youth between 12 and 17. One of the city's biggest attractions is open again after being closed for eight months. Ripley's Aquarium welcomed guests back this morning with COVID-19 precautions in place. Guests have to book a timed entry for a ticket, time entry tickets online in advance of their visit. Masks are also mandatory inside the aquarium and physical distancing must be maintained. Well, right now, tickets are all online. Uh, we're controlling number of people in the building, uh, now up to 50% capacity. So we've always had reserved tickets and time tickets. So you go online and purchase a ticket for an entrance period, and uh, you come in that time and you can stay for as long as you want. No program shows or tours, though, are being offered at the aquarium yet. Well, travelers arriving at Pearson Airport from outside Canada may take longer to make it through customs, depending on their vaccination status. Passengers entering the country may be split into fully vaccinated 
and non or partially vaccinated lines. The Greater Toronto Airports Authority says the measure is meant to streamline the border clearance process. The GTAA notes entry requirements differ depending on a person's vaccination status. Fully vaccinated Canadians can si skip mandatory hotel and home isolation after returning from abroad. And of course, for more on the fight against COVID-19 and the latest on vaccines, log on to our website, cb24.com forward slash vaccines. It's 4.05 now. Let's send things over to weather specialist Patricia Jagger. I think we all got the memo. You, me, Jennifer Shung, <laughs> yeah, all wore the same color today. I love it. Uh, perhaps they're trying to lighten up mm -hmm. what is going to be an afternoon where you need the umbrella. Oh, totally, Christina. Even right now, in the current trends, it is a little bit of a washout. But I know, look, we're like pink sisters. I just love it. And as far as it goes to the day-to-day, -day, you will want to pull for some color, even if it's in your attire, to help to boost your mood. Because, guys, it is a gray day. It is a wet day, sort of wash out if you will we got those afternoon and evening showers already here that special weather statement in effect this is current and this will hold into the late evening even into the night tonight we're talking rainfall in areas through the locales but also over to the east as well through the north especially and extremely so in extreme northern ontario north of the major great lakes and starting to see a little bit of clearing in southwestern ontario but we're not out of the woods just yet as far as it comes to rainfall we'll see localized amounts of 30 to 50 millimeters and coming up of course it's rain to start the weekend but the entire your weekend will not be a washout. You have my word. The sun will come out and I'll let you know when that is projected to be. You can kind of take a peek at the top right hand corner of the screen, but I am updating all your stats. Your seven day forecast as well is coming up. Christina, I'm not sure if you check the calendar, but next weekend's the long weekend, meaning it's the end of July. We're here already. It's happening so fast. So hope you're enjoying the ride. Stay with us and we'll talk about that seven day. Back to you, Christina. Of course, I have it in my calendar. It's your birthday. Uh, thank Thanks you. so much. I want to say. <laughs> of course. See you soon. See you soon. Okay. Well, a reminder for East End residents. The city is testing a chemical emergency siren later this afternoon. The city says a whoop sound will play for two minutes at 5 p.m. today. Another one minute long all clear signal will play after five minutes of silence. So keep that in mind. Do not call police or 911. This is a test. Well, about 200 wildfire evacuees from northwestern Ontario are being hosted by the city of Mississauga. For more, Let's go live to CP24's Mark Liverman. He's outside the Hilton Garden in Toronto Airport. Such a difficult time for those who have to deal with wildfires in their communities up north. How is the city of Mississauga helping out? Yeah, it really is a difficult time, Christina, and we know this is really, at this point, not over yet by any means. Fire is still popping up in northwestern Ontario, but in terms of Mississauga, like you mentioned there, we know uh, roughly 200 evacuees from Cat Lake in northern Ontario, northwestern Ontario, I should say, have been brought here to Mississauga. Unclear exactly how many are staying here at the Hilton, but we know some of them were brought in Thursday night. We know a few more on on Friday, unclear if any more were brought in uh, earlier today at this point. But we know, again, this is something that is ongoing. We know fires are still popping up uh, in terms of some slightly promising news. The rain has helped in recent days in terms of at least helping to extinguish some of these fires. But that being said, according to the Northwest uh, Region Forest Fire Management Center, Center they say they're still seeing uh, fire log continue to grow anywhere from 20 to 80 new fires every single day even with fires being extinguished at a rate of about 10 to 20 new fires a day so we're still seeing more pop up uh, than being extinguished at this point uh, as of this afternoon there were 137 active fires in the northwestern region concern for first nation residents being evacuated from these areas isn't just the fires of course spreading but smoke impacts as well Earlier, though, we had a chance to speak to some of the people who were evacuated. Here's more. I am one of the one like, uh, with an uh, asthma problem. So I usually, they were saying the chronic asthma and respiratory problems. So I made sure that I went because I, I have a mother that's 89 years old and I had to, she's elderly and I have grandchildren. And I had to make sure that they were safe. And when, when we were told, told to leave, I had no, I, I had to leave. And Christina, so far we know roughly 3,000 First Nation residents from Northwestern Ontario in five different areas, or at least five different areas, 
have been evacuated, and that's just so far. Christina. Okay, Mark, you. thank you so much for that update. And keeping with this story, uh, West crews battling wildfires in BC are getting a break by way of cooler temperatures. The BC Wildfire Service says 258 fires are burning today, down from 300 earlier in the week. 5% of those fires were caused by human activity, with the rest attributed to lightning. There were 57 evacuation orders in place, one fewer than yesterday. And they're also getting some backup there, the wildfire crews in B.C. 100 firefighters from Mexico have arrived in the province, along with crews from Quebec. They will join more than 3,000 personnel on the ground who are being supported by 200 planes and helicopters. At this time, they are in B.C. and, and will be briefed today, and we'll all be heading to the Okanagan. So the Mexican firefighters will be heading to the South Okanagan to support on the Incomeet um, fire near Soyuz, and, and the remainder of the, the firefighters from Quebec will be headed to the Okanagan complex. So that includes the, the Thomas Creek wildfire, the White Rock Lake wildfire, and the Brenda Creek wildfire. We have seen uh, that the activity on the, the Thomas Creek and ben, Brenda Creek kind of... Um, uh, slow down a little bit. However, um, yesterday, uh, visibility issues and, and winds and temperatures did, uh, did, did uh, increase fire activity on the White Rock Lake fire. The wildfires have forced thousands of people from their homes. And the largest wildfire in California has prompted more evacuations. The fast-moving Dixie Fire is one of seven in the state. Forecasters say hot weather and winds pose a continued threat of spreading the flames. There's also growing concern a storm moving in the evening could produce lightning and lead to more fires. Firefighters are also struggling to get a massive wildfire in Oregon under control, but say they're making progress. The so-called bootleg fire spends more than 161,000 hectares, but officials say its, its growth is slowing. It has destroyed dozens of homes and more than 100 other structures. The fire is less than 50% contained and is threatening thousands of homes.